Good morning, everybody. Hi, my name's David, and I'm part of the team here at Highway. I'd love to welcome you on behalf of Pastor Byron Ann, our lead pastors, and the rest of the team. First of all, I'd like to welcome all our Highway family. We wish we could meet together. We wish we were sitting in one of our locations with you now and praise and worshiping our God together. But if this is your first time online, we welcome you. We pray you feel part of the Highway family. And we pray that, that as you engage in the service, you feel God in your lounge room. So as we, as we go through the service this morning, we would love if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms. Uh, we'd love to get some interaction, some feedback from you. Also too, as you, as you go through the service this morning, we'd love, love for you to get online and, and comment below as, as God speaks to you during the service and welcome each other, just as family would on, on a Sunday. And what's more, our kids team have put together some fantastic content for you this morning. Please go online and get your kids to watch that while you sit back and enjoy the service. If you've got any prayer needs, our team here at Highway are ready to, to hear you for your prayer needs, your praise reports. We've got communion during our service. So please take this time right now to go ahead and get a, get a, a glass of something, a biscuit, so you can share communion with us this morning. Apart from all that, let's worship together. In the serenity of your home, you can sing as loud as you want, engage however you want this morning, how you want to engage with God. Let's worship Him. Well, we're about to enter into a time of worship. So why don't you join us in song this morning, or wherever you are. His mercies are new every morning, and His goodness, it extends to us no matter what we're going through. Lord, we thank You for Your kindness. We thank You for Your goodness. And we just lift up our worship, God, because You're worthy. And we want to be with You this morning. I love You, Lord, because Your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in Your hand. From the moment that I wake up Until I lay on my head I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so
we've come into the service today and no matter where this service is going, whether it's going into your homes or some other place that you happen to just be watching, we've come here today for one reason and that is to give all the praise and all of our attention to a good God, a God that has been incredibly good to his people. You know, there are some days that are like no other days, and there are some days that just stand out, head and shoulders above other days. They are the unbelievably good days where something remarkable has happened in your life. Maybe for you, it's been the birth of your children. Perhaps also it could be a job that you were hoping for and praying for, and it did come your way. Perhaps it was your dream home that you got the keys of and you moved into that house and you couldn't believe just how blessed you were to have a home like that. Do you know there are days that are good, but then there is a day and there are times that are great. And the day that Jesus went to the cross was such a sad day for so many because they didn't understand everything that it meant. But then when he rose from the dead, and that meant that he gave to us his life, resurrection life. That isn't just a good day, that is a great day. It means because the life that we have today is found in Christ. That day for Byron and I happened over 40 years ago when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. That is a day that isn't just good, it is a great day because we got to know that there was a God in heaven who loved us and had made a way for us to come into a living and an eternal relationship with him. And so today in your hands, I hope you've had a moment where you could take the cup and the bread is in your hand, which of course symbolizes and reminds us of his body that hung upon a cross and his blood that was shed, not just for us, but for all mankind. I wanna share a scripture with you. It's found in the book of Romans in the very first chapter. And it says, for this reason, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to everyone else. That means that what Jesus did wasn't just for one race of people. It meant that what Jesus did was for all mankind, for anyone who chooses to enter into that relationship with him. And so for you and I, we have got to enjoy the benefits of every privileged moment that we have in Christ. And so too many to mention in these little minute or two that we have together, but you know what they are and what they mean in your own life. And I'm going to ask you just to take a moment with the cup and with the bread and give Jesus all the thanks, all the thanks for all he's done in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. i 
Welcome to Highway at Home. My name is Dan. I'm part of the team here at Highway, and it's a great honor and privilege to be preaching this morning. I pray that this message encourages you wherever you're at, whatever home you find yourself in, that this would speak directly into your circumstance and situation. But before we start today, I just want to, I want to set our hearts on thanking God. I believe in a season like we're in right now as a church, as a nation, as people, I believe it's pivotal that we thank God in all seasons of our life. 
that we thank God for the family that surrounds us, the friends that we have, the nation that we belong to, our leaders, our pastors, our prime minister. So wherever you find yourself this morning, where I want you to do it under your breath. I want you, if you want to stand up, you can stand up. But do I want you to thank God for where we find ourselves today, that we would thank God that we are people who know the voice and the truth of Jesus, that we would thank God for His presence that's never left us nor forsaken us, that we would thank God for the place of where we stand today with our family with us, with our protection over us, with His guidance in our life, that we would learn to thank God despite maybe that health circumstance, despite possibly that financial circumstance, that we would thank Him for His provision, for His mercy, and for His grace. Because when we thank God, church, our perspective changes. So right now, start to thank God. Start to thank Him for all of those things. Get that thing in your mind. Ask God, God, what would you like me to thank you for right now? Because um, the book, the Bible says, to bring thanksgiving and praise unto Jesus. And we want to do that from the outset today. I want our focus to be on Him who has saved us, who has guided us into this place of great great opportunity that we find ourselves in. Let's not let our focus be stolen. Let's not let our worship be stolen, but let's direct everything and all of us into who He is and who He says that we are. We are sons and daughters of the living King and we are about to encounter Him afresh this morning. In fact, we already have encountered him afresh this morning, and his presence is with you in your living room, in your lounge room, in your bedroom, wherever you're watching from today. He is with you in your circumstance. And what an encouragement that is for me today. Let me pray before I open up the word. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your presence is upon us, that, Lord, you've given your church a great opportunity to be the light in the darkness. God, I thank you, Lord, that as the world may get that bit um, gloomier and darker, that the church would shine brighter. Father God, for every person who has doubts, every person who has fears, I just ask, Lord, that the peace that surpasses all understanding would wash over those people, would wash over your church. God, would you remind us today that you are for us, not against us, that you are our hope, you are our salvation, and you are our security. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Well, church, this morning's message is called Lost Keys and Locked Doors. Lost Keys and Locked Doors. You see, as followers of Jesus, we have to come to terms with the fact that we will face at times opposition in our life. When you read the Bible, the Word of God, when you start to unravel the the stories of Moses and Joshua and Daniel and and Jesus' life Himself, we find that there was always opposition in the greatest moves of God, that there were always opportunities found within the problem. And church, we find ourselves with a problem on our hands. You see, there's the pandemic around the world, but yes, it's a problem. But more than a problem, it's actually the opportunity that we've been waiting for. It's the opportunity for the church to love those people in their world like never before. It's the opportunity for the church to rise like only it can in a situation like we find ourselves in. It's an opportunity for us to have joy and peace amongst the fear and panic. It's an opportunity for us to shine brighter in the darkness. And church, we may face problems. I'm not saying we disregard that, but I'm saying that we face the problem looking for the opportunity that only God can provide. Yes, we have some lost keys. We feel like, you know, in my life, I, I feel like sometimes I'm trying to find the right key to unlock the right door. But I had a revelation recently, and I pray that it impacts your heart, that God's already provided the open doors for His church, that we don't need to find the right key when we have His presence at work within us. You see, you don't go up to the 7-Eleven or a shopping centre and try to get your key out to open the sensor doors, but it's your presence that opens the doors. In the same way in life, we can spend our life trying to find the right key, the right opportunity or the right moment when in reality, when the presence of God is with us and working for us, All we need to do is just walk up and the door will open. All we need to do is walk up and that thing will open up. The opportunity of God will be revealed and His presence will be made perfect in that moment. You see, church, we have a mandate to walk in the presence of God like never before. Yes, we find ourselves surrounded. We find ourselves in different situations daily. You can't keep up with the situation as it stands, but we do know this, that God never changes. We do know this, that His faithfulness is sure. 
We do know this, that He protects His people and guides His people in wisdom and in truth. And we do know that He is for us and not against us. Church, you may be looking for some lost keys. How do you get this done? How do I open this opportunity? How do I get that newfound perspective? How do I do this? How do I do that? Can I just say that maybe the presence of God will unlock the door that you, that you think is locked before you. That perhaps it could be the presence of God walking with you in your life that would unveil the new opportunities He has for you in this season. We're about to follow the story of Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16, and you can turn there now. I'll be reading from the New International Version, so it may be a little different to yours, but I promise you the story is the same, the truth is the same, it's just said a little bit differently. But the thing about this story that I love is that Paul and Silas find themselves in a situation much like I've just been saying. In fact, we can't, we can't fully comprehend the situation they were going through. Yeah, we're going through a little bit right now, but we are going through nothing like these two men have just been through. You see, they've been doing the will of Jesus. They were working in, in, in the city and, and they were healing people and they were setting the people free who had demonic oppression. And at one stage, this crowd of people come. This is just before the story we're about to read. And they start to get angry with Paul and Silas because they were being a living reflection of Jesus Christ in their world. And so the crowd get angry and they start to beat Paul and Silas with rods. And then it says that they get dragged into prison un, 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 illegally, um, get dragged into prison, prison and placed in the innermost dungeon. So they've been beaten with rods. They've been dragged into prison. They're locked up, isolated, contained and restrained. And yet from that place, God does something Im amazing, impeccable. He does something so aw awesome that only He could have provided the way out. And you see, in the story, when I'm reading it, I'm thinking, guys, how did you get to the place where your first, your first point of reference was to praise God when they, when they were locked up? How did they get to a place where their first point of reference in the situation they find themselves in, where they're locked up in a jail cell, was to pray and praise God? You see, I would have been looking for the keys, but they understood that it was His presence that was about to change everything. This story teaches us of what to do when we find ourselves with a locked door. Let's read from, ch from chapter 16, verses 25 through to 28. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Isn't that hilarious? It's midnight, middle of the night, Paul and Silas are praying and singing hymns to God because the prayers and praise of men cannot wait until morning sometimes. And they're singing and it says that the prisoners were listening to him. To be honest, I don't think the other prisoners had a choice. I think if you're in a, in a jail cell, if they want to praise and pray, then you are just having to put up with that. And so Paul and Silas are in this situation. They're praying and they're singing hymns to God and everybody's listening. And then it says, suddenly there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We're all here. Lost keys, locked doors. I find myself at home sometimes and I'm trying to get the right key for my, for my front door. I don't know if you found yourself in a situation and you have your keys, you just want to get inside the house, you want to you know, go to bed, whatever you're doing, and you're trying to find the right key for, the, for your front door. And every time I go to put the, the key in, it's always either the wrong key or it's in the wrong place. And I find that in life, we can get to a place where we're just struggling to find that thing that's going to provide the breakthrough to that door opening. And I love Paul and Silas's response that they were singing praise and praying to God. Isn't it refreshing to know that we can do something completely absurd in the moments where other people are freaking out, where other people are, are saying this is the end of the world, that we can do something absurd enough to thank our God despite our circumstances because that's what they're doing. 
They are thanking God. They are praying to God. They're not trying to get the jailer close to slam his head into the jail cell to steal his keys and run off like you see in the movies. No, they are there and they are relying on the presence of God. You see, sometimes the most spiritual thing we can do is just activate the presence of God within us. Sometimes the most spiritual thing we can do is to do that which we do on the good days. You see, what, what Paul and Silas had established on the good days when they weren't in prison was now paying off for them when they were in prison. And you see, when we prepare in our time of plenty, when we face the problem, we have a routine that embraces the presence of God. And I wanna encourage you, I wanna encourage everyone watching that the situation that we find ourselves in can be a great blessing for us when we create routines to embrace the presence and power of Jesus. Paul and Silas are in this place. They're locked up, they're isolated, but they had come to the realization that their isolation did not keep them from the presence and power of God. In fact, I have a list of things that earthly isolation cannot keep you from. Are you ready? Earthly isolation cannot keep you from the voice of God, cannot keep you from the power of God, cannot keep you from the touch of God, cannot keep you from the peace of God, cannot keep you from the joy of God or the blessings of God or the truth of God or the perspective of God or the wisdom of God or the overflow of God. Earthly isolation is one thing, but God's presence is another. In fact, God has never been good at self-isolating. He says that He's closer to us than the air that we breathe, church. And you may feel alone right now. You may be a single parent and you may be just trying to struggle with your kids. Then we want to champion you. I want you to know that God is there amongst the craziness that you have. Or maybe you've just lost your job and you don't know which way to turn. Then I want to encourage you that God is still there. He still sees your prayers. He still hears your voice. He still is drawing close to your heart because it's who He is. You see, it doesn't matter where we find ourselves, God is there in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our problem, in the midst of opposition, in the midst of the things that have come against you and your family, God is there and He is ready to bring open doors into every place you think is closed, into every isolated place of your life right now. God is ready to enter the room and He's ready to change the atmosphere. Has isolation, this circumstance, become your greatest oppression or opportunity? See, we get to choose. As the church of Jesus Christ, as His people in this world, we choose, will this be a great opportunity in my life to grow and develop the character within me? Or will this be a place where I recede rather than proceed? Is this causing you oppression or are you calling out the opportunity that God has placed before you? See, we get to choose. We get to say. We get to do what we want to do in this season because of Him who loves us. He has given strength in our weakness. In fact, the Word of God says that when we are at our most weakest point, there we are our most strong because we find the, the grace, the mercy, and the strength of God at our end, and what a place to be, that as we reach our wit, wit's end, it's the beginning of His strength. Let's remind ourselves of that today. Remind yourself of that today, wherever you face, that God, I may be, I may be feeling like I'm being pulled, stretched in all these different directions, trying to homeschool the kids, trying to keep everybody sane, trying to keep food on the table, trying to keep the job, trying to keep the house in order. I want to remind you today, that at your end, God's just beginning. That when you come to the end of your strength, God's saying, here's my strength. You can have all of it. You can have all of it. You can have all of the grace, all of the mercy, all of the joy, all of the peace that you like. Just call upon me. You see, Paul and Silas are in a prison cell in lockdown. But they had come to realise that their prayers were not locked down and neither are yours. That their praise was not locked down and neither is yours. That their hope was not locked down and neither is yours. And that their joy was not locked down and neither 
is yours. They weren't focused on the activity of trying to be free. They were focused on the activation of living in freedom. You see, if they're focused on the activity, then prison is a place of captivity for them. It's a place where everything recedes and a place where they break down and a place where they start to question who God is and why this happened. They were doing the will of Jesus. God, where are you? Why have you thrown us here? But because they had an activation of the presence of God, they were not focused on the activity. They were focused on living out an activated heart towards Jesus. See, we get to choose who we are. You see, all the activities in the world, you can pray, read your Bible, you can do all the required things that we think are required to be in relationship and yet still find ourselves in the moment where we need the presence most, doing the required things rather than seeking the one who can strengthen us. You see, religion and relationship, they can be, they can be I guess, things that we think about sometimes when we think that religion is bad and I'm not saying religion is bad, religion's routine. Yeah, great, we can do that. But re- relationship comes to a point where, you know, God, I trust you despite the way I feel. I don't really feel like, you know, praising you right now, but I'm gonna praise you anyway. I don't feel like me maybe even praying. Maybe you don't have the prayers to pray, then I wanna encourage you, continue to pray because sometimes when we find ourselves unable or not wanting to move, we need to move all the more. And if it moves you in God, it improves you. So continue to move, continue to trust Him. The escape that we see in this story was fantastic, isn't it? I mean, I love a good prison break story. I love those movies and those shows where the people get out and they're running and it's a whole big car chase and stuff like that. The escape, the unlikely. We know, us Aussies, we love the underdog. So we're cheering Paul and Silas on. We think that is the point of the story. But as I was reading this, being encouraged by the fact that Paul and Silas activated their praise, they activated their worship. They didn't get locked down into their situation, but they choose to step up and praise God despite where they found themselves. They didn't let their relationship die. They didn't let the routine of God die in their life, but they chose to activate it in their hearts. But sometimes we find that that's the miracle in this. And yeah, it's great. The doors flew open, people's chains were broken, the earthquake happened. But as I was reading on, I I came to the realization that that was good. But for me, the bigger miracle comes right after that. It comes in the life of the jailer. The jailer who, before Paul and Silas called out and said that they were there, was going to kill himself. The jailer who had given up all hope, had given up on his life, had given up on who he was and his future, in a moment turns from going suicidal to saved. This is the miracle. This is the, this is the miracle in the story, church. You see, in Acts chapter 16, verses 29 through to 34, this is what it says. And I want you to, I want you to grasp this with me because in my eyes, this is significant, church. Yes, the other things are great, but this is the testimony of being in relationship with God, that this is a testimony of Paul and Silas's devotion to God, being there amongst the chaos of life, amongst the prison doors, amongst the confinements that they found themselves in. This is the testimony of their faithfulness and it comes in the form of a saved life. Let's listen. Verse 29, the jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, listen to this, what must I do to be saved? Let me just stop right there. When people see that our actions are speaking louder than our words, they start to ask questions. So many people say, you know, love God, love people, love God, love people. Yeah, great. It rolls off the tongue really, really well. But how do we love God? How are we loving God and loving people? How are we activating? How are we living in the activation of that in our life here, today, and now? Because the world around us starts to ask questions like, how can I be saved? When we start to live what we preach. Verse 31, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And listen to this, they go for the whole household. You 
and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all of the others in his house. See, doors open in homes, doors open in communities, doors open in lives that were locked down to the presence of God. They open right up when they see the testimony of your life, when they see the grace and the mercy and the peace that you carry, when they see your, when they see your faith despite your understanding, when they see you walking this out as if it's just an opportunity for God to work. Then it says, Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. Verse 33, at that, the, at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptised. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. It's amazing what can happen when people, believers and the church rise up and activate the love of Christ in the world around us. See the earthquakes, when you do a little bit of research, you find out that it's quite common for earthquakes to happen in that region where Paul and Silas were. It was good that it happened at this time when they were praising and worshiping God. And it's a great, great testament to the faithfulness of God. But like I say, the true miracle of this story is found in the life that saved because it's more important than people being, you know, physically um, free. It's more important than Paul and Silas because the, cho- the choice was there for Paul and Silas to run or Paul and Silas to stay. And they stayed because they saw an opportunity that was a divine appointment. They stayed because they wanted to see this jailer and his household become free and free indeed. What does your life look like today? Where has your mindset been Have you been focusing on the problem and therefore neglecting the opportunity? Has this isolation period kept you oppressed or has it been your greatest place of development and character building? Have you rejoiced in the hard times? I'm preaching to myself, but have we learned that just because we see a closed door right now, have we learned to push forward to enter into His presence and to see the lives of those changed around us, have we learnt that just because we see a locked door doesn't mean it contains our praise or our worship or our devotion to God. That in fact, in those moments where we see those locked doors, where we see those opportunities crash, when we see those things start to fall around our life, that people are actually watching us more closely than ever for how we react to that which would destroy them. You see, there are people throughout our church who do amazing things every single day. And I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank you to those people who have talked to your neighbours, who have encouraged those in your life, who have, who have prayed and called people. I want to encourage you to do that even more. We are the church. This is the building that I'm in right now. This is just the building, but we are the church. And the most powerful uh, good news story, the most powerful gospel that the people in our world can read right now is your life and your actions. Maybe you're sitting with somebody who's invited you to church or maybe someone's invited you online. I wanna extend an invitation for you to accept Jesus into your heart today. Maybe you wanna connect with this God that I'm talking about who breaks chains, who leads to moments, who leads from moments of great problematic expressions and turns them into His glorious, His glorious ways and wonders. I wanna... I want to just allow you to say yes. I want to allow you to say yes to Jesus today. And we would love for you to connect with us via our Highway Church website. There's a salvation page that you can go to. You can put your details in on there. We'll be in contact with you because we believe that Jesus, doing life with Jesus is the best way to do life because He shows us who we truly are. So let me encourage you. If you're a believer, if you know Jesus, Love the world around you like never before. Don't grow weary in doing good because in due time, we are going to reap a harvest. If you don't know Jesus, choose to make the decision today because He came to change your life just like He's changed my life and all of the lives watching today. Remember church, He is for us and not against us. And every time we see a locked door, we see an open opportunity for God to move. I'm praying for you. I'm believing for you. Have a great day. 
Thanks, Pastor Dan, a fantastic message. We believe that God can set you free from your prisons. If you want any more information about getting to know Jesus better, please go online to our website at www.highway.com.au and you'll get some directions about how to get to know him better. Or otherwise, you can ring the church office at any time. But now we come to the part of our service for our offering. First of all, I'd like to thank all of those who give at Highway. If it wasn't for your generosity, this would not be on. This camera would not be here. and We would not be able to put out these messages as we do. So thank you very much. I'd like to start at Genesis 26 verse 1. And it says about Isaac that there was a famine in the land. It sounds a bit, bit similar to what it is at this present point of time. And God comes and he gives him a promise for him and for his offspring. And we read f f further on in the passage in verse 12 and it says, Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in that same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. You know, this gives me confidence. In this time of pandemic and financial stress, we can trust our God. For it says in the Bible, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Our God is there for you. You know, that's not really why I give. I give to honor God. I give because when Jesus was here on the earth, he lived a life of sacrifice and he gave. And so I choose to do the same thing. I pray that we all can live that life of sacrifice as we give to our God. Can I pray for you all that God's going to bless you during this offering moment? Lord, I pray. I pray out through this camera lens to the people behind, Lord, and I pray and ask, Lord, you'd bless every person that gives faithfully to Highway Church, but more than that, everybody who gives. I ask, Lord, you'd bless their family. I pray for health and peace and strength, that, Lord, you'd be through them this, through this time of pandemic. And God, Lord, you'd lead them and direct them exactly where they should go and what they should do, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Listed down below are the various ways you can give here at Highway. We'd love you to take one of these options and be able to give faithfully to our God. So this Wednesday, we have a, a, a new catch-up happening on, online at Zoom where you can catch up with the various departments here at Highway. Make sure you take advantage of that. Once again, our prayer requests, please go on, online and put your prayer requests in or ring, ring the church office. We'd love to hear from you. Please share this message over the various platforms so that other people can hear what's happening here at Highway. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram so we can get to know you better. Apart from that, I pray that you have an awesome week. I pray that God that's above every pandemic, above everything that's going on in the world would fill you with peace. Until we can get online next time, have a great week, an awesome week, as your God is with you wherever you go. Thank <laughs> you.